good morning everyone at the outset i would like to thank professor manoria and dr mahapatra for making me a part of this scintillating national seminar on recent trends in diastolic heart failure so now we are going to have a session on hepf no more than open disease by professor manoria who needs no introduction on this platform morning everybody professor manoria yes Uh, so good morning everybody so for the next 12 minutes i'll be talking on heart failure with preserved ejection fraction which was an orphan disease prior to 2021 and no treatment was available which could change the outcome of hepf all drugs all trials failed to improve the outcome of hepf but in 2021 it is no more an orphan disease sglt2 inhibitor empagliflozin is the first ever therapy which has improved the outcome of hepf and this is the empra preserved trial empa 10 mg was compared to placebo in patients with hepf and you can see a statistically significant reduction of 21% in the primary end point of cardiovascular death in hospitalization for heart failure the absolute risk reduction was 3.3% and nnt was 31 the primary end point was uh, driven by decreased hospitalization for heart failure the cardiovascular death or all cause mortality did not show any change there was also slowing of the decline in gfr but unlike the emperor reduced trial the renal outcomes were not changed in the emperor preserved trial stop on time this shows the subgroup analysis age less than 70 or more than 70 all benefited unlike the paragon trial where only females benefited you can see here males also benefited in this trial asians more benefit and asia again more benefit compared to the other regions baseline ejection fraction less than 50% 50 to 60% or more than 60% all showed benefit although the benefit decreases as the ejection fraction decreases diabetic or no diabetic ckd or no diabetic doesn't make any difference or whatever is the nyha class whether hospitalized for heart failure not hospitalized for heart failure ischemic or non ischemic so in several other subset the benefit was seen in all subsets as you can see in this slide and this is the post hoc analysis you can see the benefit is seen up to 64% ejection fraction the other disease which uh, is benefited in recent past is cardiac amyloidosis which was also an orphan disease in the past but now with tefamidase the new innovation for transthyretin amyloid cardiomyopathy it is no longer an orphan disease how do we suspect this in our day to day practice if on an echocardiogram you see left ventricular hypertrophy but the electrocardiogram shows normal or low voltage this is a very strong suspicion for amyloidosis there may be heart block pseudo infarct patterns thickening of the intraatrial septum is also important feature and sparkling of the myocardium the ejection fraction is normal because this is heart failure with preserved ejection fraction but there is reduced gls sparing of the apex which give the classical uh, cherry on top of appearance which is diagnostic of amyloidosis if you are uh, doing an cmr you can see there's diffuse transmural uh, late gadolinium enhancement as you can see here and if you are doing a pet imaging the details will be exemplified in the subsequent tag you can see glowing of both the left ventricle the right ventricle and also you can see intraatrial septum very thick and still glowing 99 m technetium labeled phosphate scintigraphy is also diagnostic and the striking feature is there is hyperfixation of tracer in the heart but there's attenuation in the activity 
this is the normal picture, but as amyloid deposits, uh, the attenuation of the bone uh, syntigram is there. So this is also highly suggestive of amyloidosis. And on a biopsy with hematoxylin eosin strain, uh, you can see amyloid deposit as pale pink color. And on an immunohistochemical analysis, uh, you can see in a rust uh, color uh, in the interstitial level, as you can see here. Now, this was the ATTR-ACT trial, a revolutionary trial, which for the first time uh, found a treatment which was effective for treatment of myeloidosis. Otherwise, prior to this, this was an orphan disease. And the primary endpoint, which was an old cause of mortality and rates of cardiovascular hospitalization were lower among 264 patients who received tepamidase uh, compared to the placebo and the p-value was significant. Now, when we look at the old cause mortality, you can see a significant 30% uh, reduction in the old cause mortality and the benefit starts around about 15 months. When we look at the cardiovascular hospitalization, there's a 32% reduction and the benefit starts around about nine months. And the secondary endpoints, whether it is a six minute walk test, whether it's a KCCQ score, all showed a statistically significant benefit with a significant p-value. Now, when we look at the pre-specified subgroups on the old cause mortality and CV-related hospitalization, now if you look at the ATTR RM, which is a mutation or the wild type, uh, the ATTR mutation, the benefit, uh, survival benefit is there. The survival benefit is also for the wild type. But if you look at the cardiovascular hospitalization, the benefit is negligible. But for the wild type, there is benefit. When we look at the NYHA baseline, class one and two, both the uh, benefit is there in survival as well as cardiovascular hospitalization. But once we go to the NYHA class three, uh, you can see there is uh, increased hospitalization in class three. Uh, both doses, 80 milligram and 20 milligram, are effective. So ATTR, ACT has first three feats. The first time a medical treatment has been shown to reduce mortality and morbidity in TTR-related uh, cardiomyopathy. The first time a medical treatment has been shown to reduce mortality in HF hospitalization in HFF in amyloidosis. And the first time a heart failure drug is effective on a hard endpoint by acting on the myocardium directly rather than periphery or by neurohormonal modulation. The other orphan, which was hypertrophic cardiomyopathy prior to Mevocentin, and this was an orphan disease. Uh, whatever treatment we used to utilize for this disease was merely symptomatic. We used to use beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, uh, septal reduction by alcohol or surgery, but all these uh, modalities of treatment uh, do not address the basic cause. HOCM already we know is a disease of hypercontractility. There is a hypercontractile left ventricle. Uh, there's impaired relaxation. Uh, one in 500 people suffer from disease and roughly 66% have uh, obstruction in the left ventricular outflow tract. And HCM is due to mutation in the sarcomere gene, which causes increase in the actin myosin cross bridging resulting in hypercontractile state and mevacentin is a revolutionary therapy because it acts on the, it inhibits the uh, myosin activation and decreases the cross bridging formation. And this is a phase three multicentric randomized trial, the explorer regime. And the primary endpoint was a composite functional endpoint designed specifically to demonstrate benefit both in symptoms and function. Here you can see the primary endpoint, either a greater than 1.5 ml per kg permitted increase in the peak oxygen consumption with greater than one NYHA class improvement or greater than three ml per kg per minute increase in the PVO2, no worsening NYHA was a significant benefit. All the secondary endpoint all showed significant benefit, whether it is post-exercise LVOD gradient, peak oxygen consumption, greater than one NYHA class improvement, KCCQ score or HCMSQ score all showed uh, statistically significant. So, Mevocentan is the first drug 
developed to target the underdying molecular defect of hypod, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the obstructed form, and this has been a revolutionary therapy. The Explorer HCM was the most comprehensive and adequately part randomized clinical trial conducted to date in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And in the Explorer HCM trial, treatment with mevacentan improved symptoms, improved exercise capacity, and the key aspects of health status in patients with obstructive HCM. The positive results from the Explorer HCM represents a major achievement towards improving the lives of patients with obstructive HCM and support a role of targeted medical treatment for HCM. So heart failure with preserved ejection fraction in past was an orphan disease. And all of us have faced this, but currently this is no longer an orphan disease. We have empagliflozin, which has shown improved outcome in the emperor preserved trial. The delivery trial is ongoing. We have tefavitis, which for the first time has shown improved outcome in cardiac amyloidosis, the ATTR, there's a trans in cardiac amyloidosis. And again, we have the mevacentan, which has shown benefit in the Explorer HCM trial for patients of obstructive cardiomyopathy. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, sir, it's a wonderful start of this Sunday morning. Uh, you have explained nicely the topic heart failure with ejection, uh, preserved ejection. Still, sir, I have few doubts. Uh, why renal outcome failed to improve in emperor preserved trial? The renal outcomes uh, did not show benefit despite decline, decline in the slowing of the decline in DFR. The exact cause is not known. People say if the trial would have been continued for a long time, the benefit could have been achieved. Secondly, in half rev, the ejection fraction improves after treatment. In half rev, the ejection fraction is already there, so renal perfusion does not increase. So these are some of the postulates. The exact mechanism is being explored out with further analysis. Could I ask one question, sir? Yeah. Uh, do we have any data in younger patients of HOCM? And uh, does mevacentin benefit non-obstructive HOCM? And does it decrease ejection friction? And if it does, then what are, what, are, what are the implications? There is no data in the pediatric hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy at the present state of time. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy without obstruction, it has only shown decrease in the anti-pro BNP level. Uh, the primary endpoint were not uh, benefited. And uh, some patients have shown decrease in the ejection fraction uh, because it decreases the hypercontractile state. And after stopping the drug uh, for four weeks, the ejection fraction returned to normal. But this parameter is to be assessed in the long run by more trials in the future. Sir, Dr. Asha Murthy from Chennai. Good morning, sir. I have one question from you, sir. Uh, how about this uh, newer drug uh, for uh, tefamidase uh, and plus mavacaptin for a patient with a pregnant child-bearing woman, pregnant woman? Are there, uh, there's no studies? No data available. Uh, 